Hey, what's going on guys? This is Colin Alexa here, and today I'm going to share with you guys some foreign animated films. The reason why I'm doing this is because I feel that the animated medium has a lot of potential to share some unique stories in a creative way, and there's nothing wrong with like DreamWorks or Disney films, but I feel that the animated medium has so much more potential, and these films in this list kind of make use of that potential to bring to life the stories that they're trying to share in a memorable fashion. So, um... Let's just get right to it. Um, I'm going to share with you guys some films from a variety of different countries and I'm going to share with you guys the content spoiler free and just about enough to give you guys hope. And then I'm going to share with you guys where you can watch these films. You know, either you can pay for it or you can seal the seven seas like always. Um, anyway, we begin our journey in Latvia with this film called Rocks in My Pockets. Um, which is an interesting title and it all makes sense when you watch the film. Um, it's based on the director's real life backstory. Um, the director is of course Sidney Balmy, which I have no idea how to pronounce. Um, like, probably butcher that name. And that will happen a lot in this kind of video. Um, I'm gonna butcher a lot of names, so... Um, anyway, in this movie she's trying to find out how her grandmother died. But her relatives kind of dodge the questions every time she asks them. You know, they always just give some kind of vague reply that she kind of just died in her sleep. Um, but she suspects it's suicide and that her family has a history of mental illness. And she herself struggles from depression and suicidal ideation. She kind of tries to find out what happened and the movie kind of details life in Latvia before and during Soviet times. As her grandmother kind of um, struggles to survive in a loveless marriage, which she thought that could give her um, some meaning in life. When that doesn't happen and when her husband is kind of like busy doing her own things, she, yeah, she just struggles, you know, in the, and during that time Soviets were passing through the, the Latvian territory and life was kind of difficult. She did farming and she had children and then she, she found life quite meaningless and kind of pointless, you know, because she was just doing a lot of manual labor and she, um, and no one just really cared about her, you know, and her children were too young to kind of like reciprocate, you know. And when her children kind of grows up, um, and th th these children are of course the director's aunts and uncles, uh, some of them actually also died in some tragic ways, um, suffering from different uh, mental ailments while facing various personal issues that uh, cause them uh, grievous amounts of stress and anxiety. The film is a bit heavy in that sense, like you're just, going, you're just watching this story of like all these people in the same family kind of having a, v a variety of different issues. Despite all of that, uh, the film concludes on a much higher uh, note with a very important message. So uh, that's why I feel like this film was very good. It wasn't just like uh, sadness porn or like it wasn't just using these person's like uh, misery to like make a film. You know, it's trying to put across a very important message. Besides the story, um, the animation and the uh, technical aspects is pretty good. Uh, it's well suited for the subject matter. You know, it's slightly surreal and the the appearance of the characters are slightly uncanny and I feel that that really matches the themes and, that's, and that really helps bring them across the, uh, the point and the message very well. Um, it comes with English or Latvian narration and the good thing about this is that they're both by the director herself so um, even if you're watching like English translation it's not going to be the story is still exactly the same. It's, um, the problem with like a lot of like English subtitles on, or dub narration is that they're made by someone else and um, a lot of the script gets changed, but in this instance, they are both by the director, so you can be assured that um, in either case, they are both true to what she's trying to share. So, um, this film is available on Vimeo, or you can, you know, like pirate it, I guess. I mean, um, if you don't tell, I, I won't tell on you, so it's, it's fine, I guess. Um, anyway, um, of course, um, the next film, we have to go to France. Like, um, I really struggle to find, like, which film from France to include in this, and I guess I'll go into this one. It's called Marona's Fantastic Tale. Um, it's the story of a life of a dog in France, from when she was born as a puppy with her mother, and then later as she grows up and moves from owner to owner. And each new owner kind of leads um, drastically different lifestyles. One of them is an acrobat, and one of them is like a construction worker, and so on and so forth. And each of them kind of um, presents a different challenge and different kind of um, ideals to the dog. You know, they kind of lead different lifestyles, they kind of believe in different things. Um, they kind of do different things as well, and she learns how to adapt with the different uh, owners, and she, how she tries to cater to each of them, tries to lift their spirits, basically. And despite how she's treated, you know, sometimes she's kind of mistreated, sometimes there's like um, unfortunate circumstances. Um, she's always uh, unconditionally loyal to every owner. And this is the central theme around the, the, the film, you know, it's about like, 
unconditional love, about unconditional loyalty. Um, paradoxically, because of this love, um, she has to like leave her owners eventually, and that's how she moves from owner to owner. You know, she goes to one owner, and they can't learn about each other. She loves her owner, and then when she finds out more about her owner and how she kind of realizes that you know it's kind of best for her to leave, and then she just uh, runs away just to uh, bring um, joy back to the owner and. You kind of find this out for yourself in the film, and I think that um, there's a lot of plot twists to this film, and it's quite interesting. Um, I think you should just experience it for yourself. What's amazing about this film isn't just the story, and I mean the story itself is really amazing. But what really completes the film is that the music and the animation is so uh, wonderful, and it kind of just melts into each other to this blend of like various hand-treated styles, and it's a really otherworldly experience. I remember watching this, and I was like instantly hooked. You know. I wasn't really expecting anything. I was like, oh, it's just an animated film. It looks a bit weird or childish. But it really works out. And I think that it's really, really uh, one of the best uh, animated films that I've ever seen. It's very emotional. And I believe, you know, you should just uh, like find some time on your own. Just sit down and just try to enjoy this film. Um, and the next film is in Hungary. It's called The Tragedy of Man. And it's been in production for 23 years from like the... 90s to like 2011 when the film was released and the reason why it took so long to make was that it's 2 hours and 40 minutes long which is very admirable you know animation is just so tedious you know you sit down for the entire day and you only make like 5 seconds of footage if even that at all and the reason why it's so long is because it completely chronicles the classic Hungarian play which is, has the same title as The Tragedy of Man you know, it's about how um, humanity is flawed as it explores various philosophies like, and psychologies in different ages and periods from like um, ancient Egypt to Victorian times and we see how ideas such as capitalism, democracy and hedonism are fundamentally flawed. Uh, it's not as boring as it sounds, you know, the film is very um, digestible, you know. It, it really examines the good and the bad of, of such structures and systems, but at the same time, it's not that boring in the sense, like, it's not like preaching at you, it's not really, like, telling you about it. It's just really sharing stories and how, like, various legends and myths um, kind of exemplify these ideas and how they can be both good and how, how they fail in a sense. Um, and kind of frame story that kind of um, surrounds all these, like, time-traveling periods and things like that. It's the backstory of Adam and Eve and how um, Lucifer is trying to show Adam how um, humans are just terrible while on the flip side, um, God is trying to tell Adam to keep faith and that um, this is just part of humanity, that um, all these failures are just part of being human and it's just so epic and like the animation kind of adjusts to kind of like um, very drastically to kind of um, suit the art from the time period so when you're in ancient Egypt, it kind of looks like hieroglyphs while wow, there's like this caveman times and it looks like uh, it's cave paintings, you know. It really shows like how um, this director, Marcel Jankovic, or Jankovic, I have no idea how to pronounce this, sorry, I'm very sorry, but how this guy is such a master animator and he's so dedicated to his craft, you know, it's, he really just stays true to, to this uh, story and kind of just sits down for 20 years just to make this and uh, Jankovic has made a lot of films and both, all of them are amazing, but this is truly his masterpiece right, right here. The best part is it's available on YouTube with English subtitles, so just stop watching this video and go on YouTube, um, which are already on this website right now. Just Google it and and you'll find it. And then just sit down and you watch it and that's it. You know, I, I, feel, I feel like even if you, you can just watch like five minutes of it and you'll just be hooked, you know. Like, it's, it's just amazing. I, I don't know how, how else to say it. It's just fucking amazing. I've watched this like five times now, even though it's so fucking long. Anyway, we're going to Czech Republic with a, a film called Little Otik. It's not really an animated film, but I just had to include a Svangmeyer film on this list. Uh, Svangmeyer is like a, a master of stop motion animation. It's like, if you've heard Laika and, and the films they made like Coraline and Kubo, think about that, but like without all the fancy technology. Because um, these films are actually made in like the 80s and the 90s, you know. Um, and this is what really makes Svangmeyer like a like a pioneer in this like um, stop motion technology. Uh, he makes this really really good like um, claymation and I feel that this film kind of exemplifies um, everything that he excels in this. Uh, it blends like live action, like acting, like you know it's like normal film but there's like very subtle um, stop motion segments and animated kind of like um, portions that kind of brings to life this story about classic Czech fairy tale about like a wooden baby coming to life and like eating everything's path. You know, the slum slight twist to the story, um, it blends a lot of um, genres together. It's like, it's supposed to like be like a horror film, but 
you know, it, it also tries to be extremely comedic because the scenarios in it are extremely funny. Um, so it tries to bring some comedic relief in a sense. And uh, I really won't spoil anything else. You know, it really has to be experienced to be believed. Um, it's on YouTube um, again. So like, I mean, you have no reason to not at least give it a try. You know, just just put it on for like five minutes, and if you don't like it, you can just put it off. You know, it's it's extremely low effort. I mean. We're on to um, Israel this time with What's With Bashir. This is a very unique film because it's not really a film, it's kind of like a documentary, but it is an animated documentary. It kind of details the filmmaker himself chasing down memories of the 1982 Lebanon war between Israel and Palestine. And I don't really want to get into the politics of that. And this film doesn't go into the politics of it anyway, so let's just avoid that altogether. The film is instead focusing on the horrors of war, and how the filmmaker was so traumatized by the incidents that he he subsequently has a sort of amnesia. He's unable to recall what happened to the war as a conscripted, like a teenage soldier, you know. He was in the war, he fought in it, but after that he couldn't just remember what happened. Throughout the film, we kind of follow him as he retraces the war through various interviews with people such as soldiers and reporters, and each of them shares a unique tale of survival, you know, how each of them was like, face a different part of the war and how they, um, each of them kind of walked away and survived, you know. So one of them, I think, was swimming for an extreme long distance um, just to hide away from, like, enemy fire and he thought he was going to die a few times, but eventually he came to shore and he just survived, you know. And um, the animation is a bit rough. It reminds me of, like, Flash animation from the early 2010s. You know, you can go on, like, stickpage.com or, like, um, Newgrounds and you can kind of find, like, those animated um, shots, but I feel that it's very suitable for the subject matter, you know. It, it, it's a bit weird to say that, but I mean, uh, if you watch the movie, and you know, you'll see that it kind of uh, makes sense, it kind of blends well together. And you got a very good film that's both entertaining and also very informative. You know? And it's on Amazon and a lot of various vendors, you know, it's one of the easier films to get hands on if you want to pay and support the uh, creators. So I do encourage that. Um, so this film is from Japan. Japan is a really um, big um, place for animated films, but uh, the one I'm sharing is a bit more divisive, it's a, more, a bit more weird, it's called Violence Voyager. A lot of people won't really like this because it's ho of how graphic and terrifying this film is, but at the same time, for that reason, it has an audience, and that was also the reason why I like this film, you know. It's made by this weird guy called Uji Cha, and uh, he has really made a very similar film that you should check out. But I feel that this, um, this one was a bit more polished and cohesive, so. Without spoiling anything, I can only say that this film is like about a strange theme park inside a forest that houses um, terrifying secrets including mutilated children. And you know, it's just brilliant, you know, and, this, and the animation style is one of the most eye-catching things about this film is that it's a bit like, you know those school plays that uses like uh, cardboard cutouts, like puppets, like there's some like really um, interesting practical effects about, um, at some points, um, but I really feel that you should just watch it and kind of like experience it for yourself. Next up is it Belgium. The film is called A Town Called Panic, and I believe this was like based on like a children's show or something like that. But this feature length film is actually something very happy and positive for once. I realize most of these films are kind of like a bit heavy, um, but here we have something that's just lighthearted comedy, you know, it has no real deep meaning. It's just funny, well-made, and interesting, you know. And it centers around two characters, a uh, cowboy and Indian. And that's their name really, you know. Cowboy is a cowboy, and Indian is a, as a native Indian. And it surrounds their quirky relationship amongst themselves, as well as the folks who live in the, in the titular town, you know. Shit goes down when they accidentally buy too many bricks, and I'm not joking, that's literally the plot, you know. One of them actually buys too many bricks, and, and things happen, and it's just funny. So, the animation is sort of like stop motion style, and the characters are all like little toy soldiers, and their janky movements adds a lot of like comedy to it. And if you're just looking to relax for like an hour and a half just to like watch something fun, you can watch this, you know, it's on various vendors as well, like. Um, like, I think it's on like Vimeo. So yeah, uh, give this a try. And the last film is um, coming to a very surprising country in Sweden. Um, it's called Journey to Melonia. It's a Swedish classic, you know, if you ask uh, any Swedish person, they might be able to tell you more about this film. But I feel that this film is animated kind of like a, like a Disney film with a lot more heart, you know. It's like, it's this really creative hand-drawn style, you know, it's not really creative in a sense, but it's really well executed. The story itself is based on Shakespeare's classic tale, The Tempest. Even though, I mean, it features a, a host of like colourful characters who are out to stop like a bunch of um, tyrannical capitalists who use children as slaves. You know, it is fun, I guess, it is really fun. I mean, um, it's kind of political in a sense, but 
it just adds value to watching as an adult you know as a as a kid you can watch this and you'll be like haha funny characters do funny things but then even as an adult you can find some deeper meaning to this um, you know it's it's just a good film to just sit down and just watch you know, it feels very warm you know it's like it just gives you a very fuzzy feeling and that's why i feel like you should watch this film you know, i think it's on youtube as well um with english subtitles so um just give it a try you know anyway there was just um, a few um, foreign limits of films and i I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that I've convinced you to watch a few of them. Um, do let me know what other uh, foreign animated films you would recommend um, for others to see and um, whether you've seen these films on the list and whether you like them. Thank you so, guys so much for watching I guess and I'll see you guys next time.